Today, we're gonna to learn about sequencing on the uh, Jetty DC-24. It's the same if you have a DS-24, and frankly, uh, most of the Jetty software will work the same. We're going to use the sequencer today, and what we're going to do is program this guy to lower down the winch, hang out for a minute, and then come back up. But there's some complicating factors that we'll get into in a second, and you'll see that we have to sequence a magnet, which I'll show you, a rotating magnet that keeps him stuck uh, when he is on the helicopter and the helicopter's flying. And then you'll see how his boots are magnetically adhering to the platform here. We gotta pull him up for a half second to release his feet, reverse his magnet, then drop him down, then wait, then bring him back up and have him stop in the same position so that the magnets can grab him. Let's see how it all works. So the first thing we're gonna do is power up the helicopter. I'm using a uh, Jetty R3 switch. And now the helicopter is powered up. And we're going to take a look and see what the mechanism does inside. You see that magnet? Well, what's going to happen is as soon as I go to lower him, the magnet's gonna rotate and then the, uh, the cable will start down. Then the magnet automatically returns uh, because I've already got that on a sequencer. So I'm gonna tighten this up a little bit. And the winch just lowers, it's in, there's a uh, car winch motor in here from an RC car. And then the guy uh, in his backpack has a magnet tucked in here along with a battery pack. You'll see that battery pack. And the battery pack is to just give us a little extra animation uh, and the guy's head moves randomly. And so I've got all that stuffed in his backpack. Now, in the guy's boots, a couple of magnets. And in this platform, a couple of corresponding magnets. And this is important because in forward flight, we don't want uh, the guy swinging. So what we'll do is, uh, let me give, give, give it a little, uh, tighten up the slack. So understand that I have the jetty on uh, manual mode where this switch uh, is directly controlling the guy. Now here was the problem. In flight, as I'm controlling this stick and trying to maintain a hover, to try to move this stick up to release the guy, and then almost immediately after lower the guy, and then again up to stop him, and then all the way up to get him to come back until he gets to the right point and then I have to stop it again, requires so many different movements on the cyclic that I'm losing stability in the helicopter. So the answer to that is to sequence everything onto one movement of the switch. So all I'm gonna have to do is pull this switch down and then everything will be taken care of for me. It sounds complicated, but we're going to go over it and I'll show you how easy it is. And you'll be able to translate it into other compound motions that you can use with your jetty and whatever helicopter or airplane sequences you need to uh, program like gear doors are typical uh, or maybe the lowering of a ramp and maybe the release of uh, a parachute guy out the back, whatever it may be. Let's get started with the programming. Using the menu key, going to access the model just to show you how I have the servos set up in terms of their assignments. The winch is on channel seven, the magnet is on channel nine, but they're both controlled by the same switch, and that is this switch right here. That's my SL switch. Uh, we won't pay too much attention to the magnet here, but suffice it to say, they're both on the same switch, and that's going to become irrelevant as soon as we get into the sequencer because the sequencer overrides any switch that you tell it to with the sequence. So if you have something, for example, on this switch, and then you assign the sequencer to handle the channel, this switch will no longer control whatever it was controlling before. Whatever you assign to the sequencer, the switch that you assign to the sequencer will now control it. And we'll see that in action as we get into the sequencer area. To get there, simply go into Advanced Properties, and all the way down the menu uh, is the sequencer. And here you'll see a number of cues. And I'm going to 
uh, press the soft button that corresponds to this down arrow to show you the different cue conditions. And all these are, think of this as like a, a music track. Each track uh, can be assigned to a specific servo and it can control that servo so that you can control combinations of servos along the same timeline. So these numbers here on the timeline correspond to seconds. So two seconds in, maybe I want one servo to do one thing and then another servo to do another thing. So I'm going to flick my switch down because that is the switch that I activated my sequence on. And you'll see the bar, the vertical bar, the scrub bar running down the timeline and it's setting the value of the particular servo that I assigned, which is the winch in this case, it went to zero and then it'll go up to 100% and then it will eventually go back down to zero. And we'll figure out what these mean in a second, but conceptually speaking, what you're talking about is simply a timeline. And the timeline tells the servo at what position to be at what time. That's it. So if we go to Q1 and we look at this highlighted line here, whoops, that is, you can see I assigned switch L. And if I click into the time area, I can move the scrubber bar to each of these dots. The, the, the dot you're on will turn hollow. And you'll see I can remove the dot with the X here, or I can add a dot if it's a blank area. So let's say I wanted to go two seconds in and tell the servo to be at some position. The first thing I would do is hit the plus. That creates the dot hit the menu button to secure that and then go to value and then tell the system, you know, where do I want it? Where do I want the servo? And you could go in 1% increments or if you, while you're in the value, if you press the menu key, you can go times 10 and then it'll go up by 10 or down by 10. And then you could press it again to go up by hundreds. Okay. And then if you get to the limit, it'll change to 25s and then that's just, just makes things confusing. Now I'm gonna remove this dot because it screwed up my entire graph. And so I'll just tap the uh, corresponding X and, and now I am out of that dot, that thing is gone. So, and this ought to give you a little bit better view there of the screen. So, so here, uh, as I advance along the graph, let's see what's going on. This controls the winch. And what we could see <clears throat> is, remember, I have to separate the guy from the magnets in his feet. So we take the winch up just for a split second, and then we start to lower him. At the same time, down in Q2, I've got a program for the magnet. So if I were to go down to that guy, what you'd see there is the magnet and the magnet is 100% turned, and then I just stop and it returns to its original position after four seconds. So it releases the guy for four seconds, and then once the guy's on his way down, it returns to the sticking position so that when he comes back up, we know that he will stick to the helicopter. So that's the magnet. We'll go back up and uh, we'll have a look at the, the upper graph, and that's the one that, that really makes a difference here. So the winch is going to go up, right up here, and then as soon as he's done separating his feet from the platform, we go to minus 100%, which tells the servo to lower the guy. And he's gonna lower for a good uh, 15 seconds. Pay no attention to the gray graph, that's the, the magnet. But the black line here, and this could be better, Jetty, so if you're watching this, uh, these, these graphs are sometimes difficult to understand because you can't tell which one's active, but there's a dot on 12 and we know that one's active. And if we get out here at around 16 seconds, what'll happen is the value will go to zero. You see that? It goes from minus 100 to a zero and that means the winch just stops. And the guy's hanging out 
on the helicopter. I'm trying to keep it stable to, instead of winging him around. And then it's time for him to come back home. And at the 22nd mark, we change the servo back to 100%. And we do that for the same amount of time that we lowered him. And then when the system gets to right around 35 in a split second, we will stop raising him. And then at this point, we are done. So that's the sequence. Now, if I hit the escape button twice, I go down to advanced, there's a couple of settings you have to know about. One, asymmetrical. What that means is the graph's gonna run one way. If I had it on symmetrical, it would reverse itself as soon as it got to the end. I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna do asymmetrical. That means it'll stop when it gets to the end of the routine. Sometimes you want it to go all the way out and then all the way back. Then always finish the sequence. In this case, I just said no. And in case of an emergency where I need to land or I just need to stop fiddling around with the guy, I can always flick my switch to the center point and it will stop the routine. Uh, on this one, you could argue that I, I wanna always finish the sequence. I want to always raise him back up. Uh, but to me, I'd rather have manual control over that. Cycling, that's just repeating. So if you have a beacon or some other light sequence and you just wanna cycle through it, you can do that. That's not relevant here. This is the most important setting here. Overwrite channel seven. So it'll give you an option to go through all your channels. And now what I told it was the, the switch that controls the sequence will now control that servo. I no longer have independent control over that servo with a separate switch on the transmitter like I did before. So wait until the end when you're testing, make sure you're not gonna jam up things like doors and gears and everything else. Uh, once you assign this and then you hit the trigger, there's no stopping the, uh, the sequencer until you hit the switch again, but just understand that it takes off on its little journey. So if I do this, that's going on its journey. Now, because I didn't say always finish, if I, st I can stop it. So I, that's another reason to have it set to not always finish, especially during testing, uh, that allows you to prevent jam ups. And I had the winch yanking all the way up too far uh, when I was testing it and I had to decouple the, the winch front and do a lot of other stuff to prevent damage. So, so that's a lesson learned here. And that's pretty much it. You All you're doing is telling uh, a number of different servos, maybe even just one, what to do at different points in time that is the sequencer, and I hope you enjoyed this.